Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to look at how you can prepare a WIM file for deployment. This comes from our requirements for the 7680 exam under the second section for deploying Windows 7. We need to learn how to insert an application into a system image, insert a driver into a system image, insert an update into a system image, and ultimately configure some tasks to run after we've deployed our image. And that makes sense. When we made an image file in our previous video, that file is captured a point in time. And now that that image file is on disk, other things can happen. Patches can come out. Security updates can come out. We might want to add new drivers onto the package that weren't available to us when we made the image. And if we didn't have a way to simply add them in seamlessly, what we'd have to do is take the image, build it again on another machine, or re-image that to another machine, load the images, and then save it back as an image again. That's very time consuming. What we're going to learn in this video is how you can use uh, these different commands to keep these images fresh. The one that we're really going to focus on is a man command called DISM. That stands for Deployment Image Servicing and Management Tool. And that command line function allows us to update applications, update drivers, remove drivers, and really manage what's in the WIM file without having to rebuild it from scratch or re-image it and image it back again. This is all done from the command line. So it's very, very easy to use. We can integrate it and automate it with some of the tasks that we have. And it makes it so that no matter what situation we're in, we can always get to a command line. And if we can do that, we can certainly do anything we want to do with this DISM command. When you start working with images, you're going to find that you collect a lot of different versions of images, images that are designed for certain kinds of machines. You might have different strategies on how you have different images and store them in your environment. So a very useful DISM command is one that allows us to get information about an image file. And the DISM command slash get WIM info is going to allow us to see what's in a WIM file that we specify with the slash WIM file option. Now another way to do this also is using the imageX command. ImageX, as you recall, is the same program we use to create that image to begin with. And it's a slash info command that allows us to see what's in that image file. Let's look at the image file that we created in our last video and see what we can learn about it by using both the imageX command and the DISM command. I'm now at an elevated prompt on my machine. I mean, you can see the administrator for cmd.exe here at the command line. I'm on the machine that we use to copy that particular image to using that share in our previous video. It's the temp-folder share. And if I look in here, we do have that win7ult-lab.wim file right here. And that's the WIM file I want to get information from. And I told you that we could use the imageX command to get information from the win7ult-lab.wim file. And I'm going to specify index 1, although it's not entirely necessary with that imageX. And what it provides us, I'll scroll back up here, is a, a file that's XML based that has all this image information in it. So it's not exactly the easiest thing to read. You can see directory count, file count, total bytes, etc. Notice that the creation time, high part and low part, whatever those mean, are all specified in hexadecimal. So time and dates aren't even something that we as human beings can read very well. So ImageX isn't the best tool to use, but it is important to know that you can use it to do this. It's just one of those things that you have an option whenever you're working at the command prompt. And I'm going to use the DISM get WIM info command, and I'm going to specify a WIM file of win7ult-lab.wim. And I'm also going to say, look at that first index to tell me what's in the first index. Because obviously, the WIM files, you can have many, many different images. This index requires that you, you put that in there so that it knows which particular image within the WIM file you want to look at. And in this case, I only have one. So I know it's going to be index 1. The difference, however, in this, in this output that we get, notice that we get a human readable form of this output. I can see it's the Windows 7 Ultimate Research Lab. And here's those time frames, the created and the modified times 
and I can start to see exactly when that was. It's not in some weird hexadecimal view of the world. And what I'm able to do now that I know this is the WIM file I want to work with, now what I'd like to do is find ways to work with it now that I have it on my hard drive and be able to make some changes to this WIM file. To be able to make those changes, I need to mount this WIM file onto my hard drive. Once I mount this WIM file, I will have access to the entire file system of what was on that image file. So it allows us to really get in there at a file level and make changes, any changes we would like. So this is a very useful thing to do. Notice I can do this also with the image X command. We're going to use DISM though, because we're going to use DISM a lot. And it, I find that it's useful if you use it over and over and become accustomed to it. I'm going to use the DISM slash mount dash WIM option and specify the WIM file, specify either the index or the name. The index is much easier to use. That's the one that I'll use and specify a mount directory. This is the directory on your hard drive that you've created earlier that has nothing in it. That's where all of the files will be placed that are in that image file. Let's run that mount program, that mount function of DISM, and see what we can see inside of our mount directory. Before I mount this image, let me show you the mount directory that I created completely empty. It's simply a holding place that I created, made an empty directory, and that's where we're going to specify to mount everything that's in our WIM file. So let's run this uh, DISM. I'm going to mount dash WIM. I'm going to select my WIM file with a colon, and it's the win7ult dash lab dot WIM. I'm going to again show that that's the index number one, and my mount dir is going to be the backslash mount directory. This process takes a number of minutes. It takes longer or shorter, depending on the size of the file in your system. Mine's a pretty big file. It's a two gig file. So it's going to take a number of minutes to churn through this WIM file and get everything mounted to the drive. The mounting process on my computer took about 10 minutes, just under that. And now you can see that the operation was completed successfully. Now if we look at the mount directory, notice that the entire file system of that WIM file is now there on our computer. We can go into that directory. We can change files. We can delete files. We can add files. We can do anything we'd like. That's one of the benefits of mounting that WIM file is we now have the ability to change it. So here we didn't have to re-image this on another computer to have access to it. We simply mount it using DISM. Now we can make any changes we'd like. Working with files on the operating system level is one thing, but manipulating drivers is something different altogether. Drivers have specific hooks into the operating system. There's usually registry changes. There's a lot involved there. So fortunately, the DISM command has the option to provide you with a way to manage the installation and removal of system drivers. The INF files is what you're looking for in those drivers, and you can manage them either in an online system or an offline system. If you're looking at the DISM uh, documentation, it refers to online and offline. And what this means is an online system is the operating system you're currently running. An offline system is a WIM file. So yes, you could use DISM in your currently running operating system just by using the slash online instead of slash image. So all of those things we were looking at before, the slash online also might apply to those. In fact, if you did a git drivers all, a git dash drivers, you can do that on your existing system right now as your operating system is running. We're going to get the list of drivers. We're going to just specify the image command to do that. One thing to keep in mind, if you are online and you're running this operating system, you can only view drivers. You cannot remove drivers or add drivers using DISM. That's because, well, you're in an operating system. If you want to manipulate the drivers, simply go into the operating system configuration and change your driver settings. You don't need DISM to do that for you. Here's the command to add a driver, DISM, specify the image directory and where it's mounted, and spec uh, specify the slash add driver. If you'd like to remove a driver, you can also remove it by specifying the driver that you would like to remove. Lastly, one thing that's really important to keep in mind, if you're running Windows 7 64-bit, then you're going to be installing a 64-bit driver. 64-bit drivers are pretty important drivers. Microsoft thinks they're so important that they digitally sign. They test and sign these drivers. And the only way you can install them is if Microsoft has signed off 
on them, if they've given them the okay and digitally sign those particular drivers. You can force an install of those drivers, however, if you use the slash force unsigned option. And that is the only way you're going to be able to install those on a 64-bit system because the Windows is already automatically going to reject any driver you try to install that it does not have a digital signature. If you're running a 32-bit version of Windows 7, those particular restrictions with digital signatures don't apply. That only is associated with the 64-bit version of Windows 7 and the 64-bit drivers that go along with it. In my temporary folder here, I have a directory called Drivers. In fact, if we look in that Drivers directory, I have a folder in there of a Dell 2709W monitor. And this uh, monitor Drivers has three files that goes with it, an INF file, an ICM file, a CAT file. Those are the things associated with that driver. What I would do if I was setting this up in a production system, I'd find all the drivers I wanted to add to this particular WIM file, and I would create separate folders for individual drivers. That allows me to manage it very easily. If I need to delete some or pull some in from somewhere else, I simply create or remove different folders here. Because there's a command that I'm going to use with the DISM that's going to allow me to go into the driver's directory and recurse all the way through every single folder that might be there. We do that with the DISM command. I'm going to specify the mounted image of where I have mounted this. It's in my mount directory. We're going to add driver. And I'm going to specify the folder where these drivers are located. Since I'm in the temp folder already, I can simply specify the drivers folder. And here is the secret command, recurse. It's not so secret. It's well documented. If we use that recurse command, it's going to add all of the drivers that's in the driver directory. And it's keep, going to keep going recursively into all of the folders that are there until it finds everything that it can install. And it found one that it's going to install. It is the Dell 2709W. The driver package was successfully installed. The operation was completed successfully. So just like that, we now have taken those Dell drivers and put them into part of our image. And if we were to take this image and we were going to image another computer somewhere, it would be ready to go if we happen to plug in one of those Dell 2709W monitors. The drivers would already be in the operating system ready to go. If you have gone away for a while, you come back to this image and you're wondering, did I load those Dell drivers into this? I don't remember exactly what drivers are here. We can use the DISM command. Again, we can specify the location of the mounted image. I'm going to do a git drivers command, and I'm going to specify that I'd like to see all drivers that are on this computer. And I'm going to pipe that to more so that we'll go a page at a time. There are a lot of drivers that are loaded on your system by default, most of them that come with Windows. And by using the pipe more, it'll go a page at a time. You might also want to use something like a greater than sign and redirect all that into a file. With the more, it's going to show it to us right here on the screen. As these drivers list by, you'll notice that they're alphabetized by their published name. And if we go to the top and we look where the twos are, you notice that you're not seeing the 2709W driver in there. However, if you go all the way down to the O's, here's OEM1.INF, which is this 2709W.INF. Windows takes all of the third-party drivers, and as it adds them, it gives them the name OEM1, OEM2, OEM3, OEM4, and so on. So you're not going to find any of the drivers you add here under their published name. You're going to have to look at the OEM drivers and then find the INF file you're looking for. This is going to be pretty important because if you need to remove this driver, you're going to have to specify the driver name as its published name. So you may have to go in and get a list of all the drivers, find the published name for the one you're looking to remove, and then specify that when you do a remove driver. Just as you can install drivers and remove drivers, you can do exactly the same thing to applications. Here's cabinet files and Windows update files that you can manipulate using these DISM commands. You can also administratively enable or disable features of the Windows operating system all from this ability to manage applications. We call this package management. You can get package, get package info, add a package, and remove a package or work with the features of the operating system with Get Features, Get Feature Info, Enable Feature, and Disable Feature. As if you ever install a package and you go back and look at the status of the package, you may notice that it says that it's pending. And it's going to be that way 
until the system boots. Don't be thrown by that. That just happens to be how the packages themselves are implemented because they can't really get all the way installed until you actually start up the operating system. So this gets them ready to go, gets them pending to be installed, but the actual installation doesn't occur until that system finally boots up. If you'd like to see what packages are on your system, we use the DISM command. And again, we use that image with backslash mount. You should be getting used to using these types of commands in the DISM by now. And we're going to use a get packages command. And it's going to go through our image and show us all of the different packages that might be on here. Now, this is a pretty stock image. There's nothing extra that we added to this. So the only thing we're really going to find are thing like, things like language packs. These are the things that come with Windows, the Windows Foundation package. If we had installed something ourselves, we'd see that listed in here. But in this case, it's just the packages that came with Windows. If we wanted to specify certain packages to be uninstalled, we could also do that from here as well. Let's also go in and we'll specify our image and look at the features that are in our Windows operating system. I'm going to pipe this one also to more because there are a number of different features that we can look at in here. And these features may be something that are, we might recognize. For instance, if I scroll down a little, you can see Solitaire is enabled, Spider, Spider Solitaire is enabled, Hearts is enabled, Free Sail is disabled and pending. I did a disable on Free Sail earlier. Maybe we'd like to disable Hearts in here. The way you would do that, I'm going to hit Control C. I'll use DISM image colon and specify my mount directory, you would use disable-feature. And then I'm going to put in hearts. Notice I put in hearts with a capital H. I put it in to match exactly the way it is right there. And the reason I did that is because it's required. Windows will not recognize that feature unless you use the correct upper and lower case that matches exactly the way it is when we did a get features. So as long as you do that correctly, it will find it go through entire 100%. The operation was completed successfully. And now hearts will be one of these disable pending features that when the operating system starts up, it will automatically disable that. And now I'll have some very angry people coming to find me when they're trying to play their free sale game and their hearts game. Managing patches is probably something that you're going to end up doing the most when you're working with some of these images because patches change all the time. Whenever you're working with patches, if you've ever had to do this manually, you know it's a bit of a pain. You have to go to the system, re-image this WIM file, load the package, and then create an image again. That takes a long time to go through that process. So instead of doing that, we can use this DISM command for slash image. I can check for an app patch. I can get app patch info, get app patches, get app info, and get apps. So there's quite a bit that I can do with the patches. If you happen to know, the globally unique identifier, the GUID, then you can include also with that a particular product code. And if you're doing a lot of batch files, that may be something that you do that makes the process a lot easier for you. I also put a note here so that you're aware you can only really check if this is an MSP or an MSI. And so you're aware MSP files actually patch the MSI applications. So that's what the differences are between the MSPs and the MSI, being able to access those. That's the only thing this Manage Patches does. If there's a custom app that needs custom patches assigned to it, this will not work for that. This is specifically designed for the MSP and MSI type updates. If you're working with an image and make the changes just like we've been doing so far, you can only save those if you do something called a commit. If you choose not to commit those changes, everything that you've done since the last commit is going to be rolled out. So this is an easy way, if you happen to make a mistake, to take this all the way back before you made any of those changes to begin with. The commit command is a DISM slash commit dash whim, and then you specify the mount directory. So you can make a change. If you like it, you can save it. And then make another change, and then commit it. And make another change and commit that one as well. If you're just done and you'd like to unmount what you're doing, you can use the DISM command with an unmount dash whim, specify your mount directory, and then use either a slash commit or slash discard. And that way you can save it once you unmount it, or just unmount this thing and completely discard everything that I've done at this point. And we can go back to where we were since the last time we committed it. 
what I'd like to do is take what I've done, unmount this configuration, and as we're unmounting the WIM, go ahead and commit all of the changes. So I'll use a DISM, I'll unmount dash WIM, I'll specify my mount directory as my backslash mount, there we go. And I'm gonna choose the commit command to make sure that it commits my changes to our WIM file. Now normally you go through this process and the image unmounts and everything's fine, but there are situations you can find yourself in, even unknowingly, where when you try to unmount the image, you get an error. That's exactly what I've got here. The directory could not be completely unmounted. This is usually due to applications that still have files open within the mount directory, close these files and unmount again to complete the unmount process. Well, in this case, that isn't entirely accurate. It's not that there are, are files open within the mount directory. It's that I have a Windows Explorer window open right here in the temp folder where the WIM file lives. I must close that Explorer file in order to have this exact uh, process complete. And if I do the exact same process again with the commit, what we're hoping to get is an actual message that says it worked. But what it really says is something different. The specified mounted image cannot be committed back into the WIM. This occurs when an image has been through a partial unmount or when an image is still being mounted. This Im if this image was unmounted with commit earlier, then the commit probably succeeded. Please validate this is the case and then unmount without a commit. If we'd like to be sure we can do this, we can do a DISM and a git mounted WIM info. And it's gonna tell us that the mount deer mount directory, the mount deer is still there, the mount file is still there, but the status is invalid. And in those particular cases, we need to clean up these orphaned files because we really did finish the mount. In fact, if I scroll back up, you can see it saved 100% of the image and it unmounted 100% of the process. So to clean up all of these things that were left over because we had that particular Windows Explorer open, I'm gonna use DISM slash cleanup dash WIM. That's going to go through and get rid of stale files. Notice that it says unmounting image at D colon backslash mount, and it's scanned for stale files. Now I'm going to do my get mounted WIM info again, and it says no mounted images found. So if you find yourself where the image didn't quite unmount, and this happens all the time, make sure you've closed out all, everything else that you have on your desktop, other programs and Explorer windows, Try to go in and make sure that you can clean it up and you may find that it very easily is resolved. You may have noticed with DISM that we could ask our Windows to install applications and install patches to some of those applications, but there was no way to really determine what got installed first. You don't want a patch to an application being installed before the actual application is. There are dependencies that are associated with those things. So what you can do is create an unattend.xml file that will specify what gets done first, what gets done second, and what gets done last. And you've got some options in there. You can have a 10 or 12 or 20 or 100 different things going on, and the unattend.xml file can allow you to put those in the proper order and have everything all occur the right way. You would then use DISM with the slash apply dash unattend option to specify the unattend.xml that you would like to apply to this Windows image. The easiest way to create an unattend.xml file, you've done one of these before, is with the Windows System Image Manager, the SIM. And that's a very, very easy way. And we're going to, in a future video, use the Windows System Image Manager to create some of these XML files. It's very easy. It works with it automatically. And when you start working with it that way, you'll find it's very, very easy to manage this entire process. Let's see what we've learned in this deployment prep video. Our first question is, which DISM option provides information about a Windows image file? We used this one initially to find out which image file was this? What was the name of the file? When was it created? And that's the slash git dash WIM info command. Let's try another question. What are two ways to commit your WIM changes? Again, you have to commit to actually save those changes to your WIM file. You can do that as you go with the commit-wim option, or if you're ready to get out of this and unmount it completely, we can use the unmount-wim command and at the end add a slash commit to save those changes. 
And our last question, what can you use to manage tasks after the deployment is done? These are things you're not able to do prior to the deployment. You have to actually have the system start up. So how do you tell which order to go in? You create an unattend.xml file. Well, that covers our requirements. Now you should have a really good idea on how you can take that WIM file that you've already created and add patches to it, change drivers, update applications, and much more. There's a lot you can do before you even deploy this onto somebody's system. If you'd like to watch any of our absolutely free Microsoft videos, you'd like to participate in our message boards, or send me a message, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.